What's up guys? Graham here. Wanting to bring you guys another warrior build, this time for a little more survivability. This is the Warlord Paladin version. And it's becoming a little more popular lately because I've been seeing it in uh, forum posts and also Mace Windu in the comments in one of my videos sent me the build and said, hey, try it out. But also D-Day had posted this way back whenever he first posted the 48 Warlord 28 Paragon build. So this has been out for a little while and everybody's doing their own variations of how to survive in war fronts. So I know that a lot of you guys get frustrated with Warrior because it has to be in the pocket. It has to be up there hitting people and usually you're going to be taking all the damage and whenever you don't have very good healers or no healers at all, it, it becomes very frustrating. And I know that almost better than anybody else because I'm starting to become a little more recognized in war fronts and stuff. People are seeing my videos more and more and they, whenever they see me in a war front, they think, oh man, I'm going after that guy. He is definitely going to die this time. So I take a lot of damage and for me to be able to heal is very, very important. So this build is going to help me a lot whenever I can run it. So let's jump right into it. All right, our build here is 48 Warlord. And basically you fill up the entire tree except for you do not have any points into Shatter. No points into Disorient. No points into Field Navigation. No points into Defensive Surge. No points into Battlefield Medic. No points into Tactical Advance. And mind you, this build will be in the description below for uh, in a link, so you guys can just click the link if you can't see the screen very well. Uh, this will be in 1080p, but a lot of people have smaller screens and they can't see exactly where the points are and all that. So down there in the description below, and you guys will be able to see a link to it. All right, so the 28 into Paladin is we got five points into a good defense. 5 points into Vengeful Wrath, 1 point into Aggressive Guardian, 5 points into Enduring, 1 point in Light's Hammer, uh, 3 points into Pacification, 1 point into Touch of Life, 2 points into Balance of Power, 2 points into Resolution, 2 points into Invigoration, and 1 point into Shield of the Vengeful. And our last soul here is Tempest. All right, guys, a little bit of explanation on how I did all of this. This is basically D-Day's version of the Warlord Paladin, except for I've changed around a couple things uh, that work for me. And you can change things around how you need to, but I do highly recommend you keep 48 points into Warlord. That way that you get your tactical surge and that will add a lot of damage for your attacks. And you don't want to slack on the damage. Definitely not. Okay, guys. Um, another thing that I changed was uh, I put in defensive, defensive maneuver, which he doesn't have in his build. Um, also, all right, resolution. Hardly anybody is putting points into resolution, and I think it's super important. I used to run a Paladin build back in the day whenever I was first building up my Warrior, and whenever you're taking a lot of damage, you're trying to get out of the situation. You're trying to use your defensive maneuver or your force march or whatever to get away from the opponents because you're taking so much damage. So while you're running away, usually you pop your big heal, which is your touch of life. But whenever that's used up, you start using your smaller heal, which is uh, your lights bomb and while you're spamming that uh, small hill it's got a three second cooldown I believe so you're not healing very much you're you're hitting that small hill and then you got to wait three seconds to hit it again and it's really not much healing and a lot of times you're just gonna die while you're running away so 
resolution it makes it to where that three second cooldown is now a one second cooldown so now every one second you can spam that small heal over and over so it makes it heal so much more three times as much healing put it plainly until you run out of energy so I think that is very very paramount in to make sure that you have two points into resolution most other builds don't have that and I highly disagree with it also another thing is I have two points in invigoration you can decide to put uh, one of those points down into balance of power if you want it's basically just a choice both of them add damage it's just a opinion on which one it needs to be in all right and we do not have Skyfall in this particular build because the 28 Paladin is just so good because you've got to go up to Shield of the Vengeful. Shield of the Vengeful adds 25% to your damage. Absolutely needed. Do not shy away from that. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into the macros. Alright guys. Here are our macros, and I will have all the macros in the description below, so it'll be easy for you to copy and paste into your builds. Um, I'm not going to post the macros on the screen like I did in the past, and I'm not going to uh, read them out loud. So if you can't see the screen, go ahead and look in the description below because I'll have all the macros down there. Alright, let's go into the finisher which the finisher the big thing is going to be your killing field that's going to be your hard hitting ability there but it has a cooldown so uh, righteous blow will be the second finisher that has no cooldown all right for your charges now i'm starting to put thunderous leap into my charges uh it's a planar ability which i think all warriors have it so it's nice to have a third charge you know in most of these builds but we got the paladin charge there with the righteous charge and then the warlord one and then we put in our uh, planar one which is thunder sleep and I got it uh, ground target so you can actually use it just like a charge and not have to click around on the ground in order to use it it will charge right onto your opponent alright there's the pull which is the same as all the warlord builds you know same pulls here goes our small heal now I've got this macroed as uh, target self and the reason for that being is that I do not want to heal anybody else I want to heal myself and I guess you could have it on a separate button if you wanted to to heal other people instead but it's always me taking damage so it's it's very important that I don't accidentally have one of my allies targeted and trying to heal myself and he'll heal him instead even though he's at full life and I'm about to die and here's the big heal this is the one that's going to heal you full life alright guys that's the macros and on my bar down here I've got the builder which is uh, shows king of the hill so I know the cooldown on it uh, my finisher which shows killing field my two surges which is tactical surge and then battle surge now I've got no permission to die so I make sure that I can survive if I'm about to go into the negative on hit points uh, my charge macro my pull macro I've got forced march so increases my speed and I, I stress to people all the time do not use this to uh, chase after people if you cannot get to them with two pulls three charges with thunderous leap uh, snare which I put the snare in our build macro which is eye of the storm so if you want that on a separate button you can put it on a separate button I put it into the builder macro uh, it's all up to you but if you can't get to the people with all of that going on then you probably do not need to be blowing your forced march on chasing people as well 
because that needs to be used as your retreat. Whenever somebody, if you get pulled into the enemies and taking a lot of damage, and you pop your full heal and start spamming your small heal, you need to be able to hurry and get out of there. And your defensive maneuver, which makes you leap back, and your force march is what's going to help you get away. And I have break free on a separate button. Never, ever, ever ever guys do not put this in your macros it's so important that you have it on a separate button because if you are getting snared or something like that and you are spamming your button and it uses your break free well the moment somebody runs up and stuns you and all the enemies are running at you you're not going to have your break free up to get away so only use your break free in dire situations where you need to get away or um or if somebody's about to die. I mean, you can use it then and if you feel like you're not going to be in any kind of trouble. All right, we got our interrupt, which is neck punch. We got lights hammer. Now, this is awesome. This is our stun that stuns somebody for three seconds. So, even though this does not have a burst macro like a lot of the other Warlord builds that I post, this has... Uh, so you're not going to do that surprise damage on people. You're going to do a good amount of damage with this build, but you're not going to do the surprise damage like the 48 Warlord 28 Paragon. So in order to kill the healers, you know, you go up and you start hitting them and you're blasting them with the King of the Hill and your killing field and all that. Well, then they start healing themselves. You go ahead and interrupt. Well, they start trying to heal themselves again. Go ahead and stun them. Stun is going to lock them down and really allow you to kill them a lot of the time. And, and stuns are absolutely just devastating to melee as well. If somebody comes up and tries to one-on-one -on -one you or something and you stun them, you're going to have three seconds to just beat on that person and feel sorry for them as you're standing over their corpse. Okay. Then we got the small hill here, and then we got the big hill macro. And also, on your bars, guys, make sure you have brothers in arms and guard. Protect your healers, guys. Protect your healers. And these two abilities will allow you to. All right, here's your buffs. Shield of the Vengeful, which is your paladin buff, adds 25% to your damage. Very, very important. Uh, enhanced conductivity. We got defensive posture, recovery posture, and of course your planar buffs and all that. So uh, you can put deadly posture instead of one of these postures, but uh, if you're running this build anyway, you're looking to survive and defensive posture and recovery posture will help you a lot with your survival. So, okay, how to play this build. Alright, uh, we've got three charges and two pulls, so you can charge right in and go ahead and hit your builder until you got three combo points built up, which is the little swords there under my health bar. Well then, the first thing you want to do is put up your tactical surge. This adds 20% to your damage and also increases your healing received. So. Go ahead and build up three more points and put up your other damage buff, which has 25% damage increase. But it also makes you take more damage as well. So that needs to be your second surge that you put up, not the one that you put up at first, in my opinion. All right, now that you've got three combo points built up, you go ahead and hit your finishers and just basically spam a lot of damage at people while they're Trying to get away probably. So while you're beating on these people and being a destructive force, let's say you start taking a lot of damage. Well, go ahead and stun the person. Go ahead and lock them down, you know. And if the damage starts to be too much, hit your defensive maneuver, which is going to leap back and then pop your forced march while you're running. But while you're running, you want to go ahead and hit your small heal, which is going to be healing you up the entire time that you're running. Every one second, you can pop that. But if you're about to die, you want to go ahead and hit your big heal there. 
but that's only if you're about to die you want to go ahead and pop your full heal and if you're really about to die even after your full heal go ahead and pop your permission to die so as you can see it's all about surviving with this build you're going to do a lot of damage but you're going to have so many options to survive you're going to be able to stun people for offensive reasons as well as defensive reasons if somebody is getting close to killing you go ahead and stun them but while you're doing your retreat go ahead and spam your small hill and pop your big hill if you need it and if you're about to really go down go ahead and hit your per no permission to die so that's it guys all about surviving uh, heal 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 no permission to die if things are getting really bad but make sure that you keep your forced march and your defensive maneuver for retreating do not use it to chase people guys all right and also make sure you use your brothers and brother in arms and uh, guard on your healers keep your healers alive because they're the ones that's going to keep you alive so, that's the build and if you guys enjoy this video make sure to hit the like button that way uh, I know that you guys enjoy the build videos and as usual my name is Grim and I'll see you tomorrow